Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is I, Embrace the Matrix, and this is going to be another video of me just ranting and raving and talking and letting you know what's been happening in the world of the Matrix. So, if you got 40 minutes to kill, got nothing better to do, sit back, relax, listen to me. Uh, listen to my, uh, well, my voice. <laughs> Woo -wee. It's been a busy and rough couple months, people, let me tell you. But anyways, let me tell you a little what's going on here. So I already, uh, this is a huge canvas. This is a 48 by, tw uh, 48 by 24. Yeah, 48 by 24, so it's 4 foot by 2 foot. Um, I've already kind of painted it blue. Uh, I'm gonna go in with some uh, teal and some other kind of blue and uh, get it, uh, you know, just creating a background. And of course, we're using Liquitex Freestyle Paddle Brush. I love these uh, Liquitex brushes. I just uh, posted a picture on my Instagram of uh, a couple of my. Uh, Liquitex freestyle brushes. Those things are awesome. They're not cheap. Let me tell you. They're a little pricey, but <clears throat> They're the first brush that I've used At least you know that I know of that the bristles just don't like shed all over your painting So I love to use them for doing stuff like this like backgrounds and stuff because I You know, I, you know, maybe once you get it seasoned a little the you know as far as you know getting it wet and keeping some people like to keep their brushes in water I don't do that I rinse them off I shake the shit out of them and then I just lay them flat to dry uh, usually on a paper towel or something like that um, because you, I don't think you want to you know stand them back up after you wash them because you know the water can run down into the metal part and corrode your glue and next thing you know you got your brush tip falling off which I've had happen on some of my cheaper stuff but when you clunk down you know 20 bucks for a brush or whatever you know you're like I'm going to take care of this and as you can see if you go on my Instagram I mean it's not like you're going to keep it all that clean but my point is you know they uh that's what, I love the brushes because they look dirty. Like that's that's a filthy brush, but you can put any color in it, and that's the color you're gonna get. It, the you know what I mean. Like you don't have to worry about any like bleed through from previous colors as long as you wash your brushes out. And I've seen a lot of videos of other artists that don't. They talk about how they you know end up leaving stuff sit out and uh, you know it dries up and stuff like that. And I go I could see that happening, but. I'm so, I'm such a clean person, I'm so organized, and, you know, even to a fault, maybe, that, you know, not to, like I said, these aren't, these aren't cheap, so you want to take care of them, um, but even my cheap brushes, I still have some of the first brushes I've ever used, just because I just rinsed them out, I find, too, if they, if they dry up a little, you know, even if you wash them, you think you did good, and then the next day, you're like, damn, it's like stiff in the middle, I just let them soak in rubbing alcohol for a little bit or some real hot water and it'll, it'll loosen up get some uh, or try some uh, lava soap I've washed my brushes yeah unfortunately we we lost a file so it's kind of like you know we're skipping ahead in time I did all this stuff but I couldn't find the video I'm just getting back to painting guys you know I've I just moved We just moved our uh, residence again. We moved a year ago, and then we just moved in September. And we got a, a much bigger house. We move, actually moved into like a six-bedroom, two-bath house. And it's got a pretty big basement. I'm going to be doing a video showing how I got things laid out now. You know, uh, I'm, I'm sure some guys are probably interested in seeing that. But uh, just for anyways, just to document because I've 
I've done video uh, videos of my other layouts and uh, studio setups and stuff so you can see you know how I've managed to uh, evolve and improve upon what I'm trying to do here but now because I have a bigger chunk of a basement uh, I got a pretty big basement as it is but I got a bigger piece of it so I mean I can actually walk around my table as you can see in this video which it actually is probably one of the coolest things because I'd like being able to go all the way around a table. <laughs> I've never been able to until now, so it's um, it's pretty cool. Uh, you know, it's a little more freeing and relaxing because before I'd have to work on it and then flip the painting over, and maybe you don't want to do that. Maybe you just want to leave it and go around. I mean, as you can see, like when I lay down strokes on this one, strokes. That's funny. Um, laying down strokes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, here we go. Painter's tape. This is a uh, half inch painter's tape. But um, as you can see, I got a nice arc arc in, in my strokes. You know, when we're laying down these arc strokes. So, you know, it's nice to be able to walk around and you can kind of give a flow. So, yeah, we're going for the super, super big. Um, I don't know what you call it. I, I started calling this series ETM because of uh, MBW, which if you don't know who that is, Mr. Brainwash, there, there's a documentary on him called uh, Exit Through the Gift Shop or something like that. But uh, he's a pop artist. And um, I was a fan of his for a while, but I'm not anymore just because I, I've seen him uh, just use uh, what's going on socially just to make money. It's it's not anything more than just, uh, you know, oh, it's Black Lives Matter, so we'll do a painting, you know, you know Martin Luther King or something like that, and then he sells a bunch of them. I mean, it's just, it's predictable is what it is. So even people have commented on his Facebook, like, oh, you know, when a tragedy happens, if, you know, France, you know, and things like that. It's like, oh, here comes the, uh, the next... Uh, limited edition 100 count print okay they're 5,000 a piece like really dude come on man I actually own a few pieces of Mr. Brainwash I have them framed and you know I still have them they're actually sitting in my closet though because uh, since I moved to this house I don't know if I'm gonna I don't know if we're gonna settle here although this is nice and we have some, we have some space um, because we also you know we run a business too so we have uh you know, being that it's a large house, you know, six, three bedrooms upstairs, three bedrooms downstairs. We just turn the upper half into the, of the house into the office, you know, for our primary business. And um, got to take got to take photos. You know what I mean? Uh, so uh, during, you know, working, working in progress, hashtag working in progress. What was I saying? I already forgot. Somebody remind me. Oh yeah, business move. So yeah, so you know the living, our living quarters, if you will, are downstairs, and the upper floor is all the business because it has a bathroom and you know three rooms, plenty of room for you know our workers and us and everything. So definitely a lot more room in that regard. But um, yeah, so we're you know taping away. What can I say? I'm taping away. Uh, I'm thinking about putting out a, a shortened, shortened version. There's the back of my fat head. Um, I'll subscribe to anybody that can tell me what the tattoo on the back of my head represents or means or what it is. I'd subscribe to you anyways. It doesn't matter. Um, but nonetheless taping away and this is all you know and, and I gotta say when I do this I obviously uh, I'm not using a, a tape measure or ruler or anything this is I'm doing these all by sight and I think I am pretty good at, at lining it up and gapping it because really if you had to stop I mean I'm 
I'm, I tend to be precise, and you'll see, I break out the T-square, the T, uh, the T-ruler, I don't know what you call it, T-square, I don't know, T-ruler, I don't know, the T-thing, with the lines on it, but when I, uh, do what I'm gonna do, don't wanna give anything away, um, not that you didn't see it in the thumbnail, there were, jeez, Matrix, get with it, um, but yeah, then I, I go for precision because I want it to be as square and true as possible. But yeah, when I'm doing these lines, I'm just eyeballing them. And that's half inch for all you that might ask, and I'm sure people will. It's half inch blue painter's tape. I bought it on Amazon because you can't buy it in the stores. I've tried. You can get like 88 or 0.88 of an inch painter's tape or some weird measurement. It's not even like one full inch, but uh, and you can get the inch. You, but you go on Amazon. Come on, let's step. Let's get with it, people. Amazon Prime. If you're not Amazon Prime, and something wrong with you, um, because you don't have to leave the house to get a lot of stuff at a, at a very good rate and have it in a couple days, and you don't have to deal with what I like to refer to as a general public, of which I am not a fan of the general public. I got to say, when I get to the end here like this, I try to leave, um, even with the centerpieces, I try to leave just like a, the slimmest of a triangle so you can see the corner, um, that there's a corner there. It doesn't always happen that way, but we try. And of course, there it comes, it comes the white, titanium white, all day long, mixed with uh, gloss gel medium. That's what I do. When I got to do something like this and extend paint, I'll take, even if I'm using what they would consider artist, uh, you know, or school paint or whatever, I don't know, like artist loft paint, which I don't think is horrible paint. Yeah, it's not as good as golden Liquitex. I use those as well. But, you know, I figured out ways to make artist loft paint uh, a better, thicker, you know, more covering paint, you know, and it's, it's, there's no mystery. There's no science to it. Just mix it with gloss gel medium. I mean, and get you some Liquitex gloss gel medium. I buy it in a, in a one gallon. Is it one gallon? What is it? Three, three comma, 3.78 liters. I don't know. It looks like a gallon. Probably is three gallon. Maybe, maybe a three gallon bucket. I don't know. I buy it in a big bucket because I use it quite a bit because it helps you extend your paint, you know. So and I think, you know, it, it thickens it up. And uh, so you're saving paint and, you, and and it gives it it does give it like, yeah, obviously a gloss gel, glossy finish, you know, but it's not crazy glossy, especially if, you know, you're going to come at it with var with uh, varnish, whatever kind of varnish you're going to put on it. This is my favorite part. I don't know about you guys, but this is always my favorite part is peeling the tape because, man, it takes so some it's so long. Keep in mind, I speed these videos up. It takes me a while to line up that tape and get it down. So, yeah, this is very rewarding for a person like me, especially with the mental instabilities I tend to have from time to time. That's uh, very pleasurable. It's the simple things, people. You have to appreciate the simple things. And, of course, we're going to tear the border off, too. Because, see, what I, I, I kind of do my own little thing with the border. We'll, I'll explain more when it's happening. But, you know, I mask off this edge because I'm going to then now mask off the inside so I can create my border, you know, for, this, for these style paintings. I just think it looks good. And because I said so <laughs> oh yeah that's a very sharp exacto blade be careful um, don't get too close I don't want anybody getting hurt um, but yeah I've gotten this down and if you watch you'll see um, yeah we're just we're just making a few checks here just measuring and stuff um, yeah I want to get a nice straight line um, but you see boom I, I just put enough pressure to cut the tape I never go into the canvas and I'm right there at the edge because I'm not pulling the tape up when I put the ruler down it's a very delicate move because that's the only way I know how to do it and 
I want a nice straight line. I gotta have a straight line. This is my this is my border, you know, my funky border that I'm gonna throw down. That looks good enough to eat. I, I create a border on paintings that is good enough. It looks good enough to eat. And you'll see. You'll see what I'm talking about. Stick around. Hopefully you're still with me. I'm like 15 minutes in or so or 13 minutes in. We got plenty of more things to talk about. But yeah, very fine. You got to have a very sharp X-Acto blade. Don't. I use X-Acto blades for different things with painting. So I have a couple X-Acto knives that are just for using when I create stars and stuff in my paintings. And then I have one that I always keep, you know, a fresh, clean blade on, sharp, so I can do stuff like this. Because, yeah, I mean, I'm really picky about things. Anybody that knows me knows I'm, you know, I'm, I'm the epitome of anal. So I like it to be, things to be precise and just right. Especially for a painting like this, because, you know, it... it it's uh, it's more geometric, I guess you could say. So it is about some, although this is not any mathematically equated painting, it's um, you know. But looking at it, the whole the whole point of these two, I think, is is in my mind has gotten to just as silly as how long can you stare at it? Like really, I, I mean, I'll be honest, I I can only do like a, a short period of time maybe less than a minute because it starts messing with my eyes so I don't know there's other meanings behind it too just you know I'm like the line guy I like making lines lifelines and stuff so and of course you know lifelines you know they inter intersect and overlap and uh, affect defect effect 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 whatever that means who knows the difference i don't i don't care but uh yeah so things have been kind of uh kind of crazy from moving we had people that were supposed to help they didn't they didn't come through so i mean it was literally me and my wife <clears throat> that pretty much moved everything uh my refrigerator i have a side by side big ass refrigerator and while we were pulling it up, I was pulling it up the ramp on the U-Haul we rented, the second one we rented. Uh, the wheels like didn't come up over the edge, and um, no, it's my phone. Don't worry. Don't think it's yours. But uh, when I was pulling the fridge up, the the thing I slipped. I slipped because you know the, the damn U-Haul things. They need to put some traction on those on the floors it's like flat metal that's it like you know they need to they need to put some grips up there so yeah so i but i i fell back and the fridge the whole thing fell on me i, I managed not to break anything but when i fell back there was a filing cabinet on the truck behind us and had the keys in it you know in the lock well as i fell back i fell into that and i broke the key off with my rear end and uh, I sliced a, you know, a good, good, good little scrape and chunk out of my thigh from the broken key. Uh, but yeah, having that fridge on me, and then I kind of was able to wiggle my way out and hold it up at the same time. It was, yeah, it was very trying. Um, so yeah, it, it was, it, that was just one thing. A few things went bad with that move. We tried to move a crib. Apparently if you buy a crib and you put it together in the room and then you have to move, don't think you're gonna be able to move that damn crib out that, out that door without taking it apart. Cause I tried and I failed. And in the end, I destroyed the damn crib. <laughs> just because I didn't, you know, when you're, when you're working seven days a week, you have a two-year-old who's wild and out of control only because he's my kid. What do you? I, I'm not that shocked about his behavior, um, but unfortunately, it impedes on things needing to get done sometimes. So yeah, when you're trying to do all this stuff, you're kind of in a hurry, and I don't have time to go downstairs get the drill or whatever and start. You know, no, I don't have time for that. 
So, yeah, we tried to... So in the end, we had to make a mad dash to Walmart and buy a freaking new crib. And then as we the day we moved in, I had to set up a crib so the kid had a place to sleep, for Christ's sakes. Um, but anyways, yeah, moving sucks. If you've moved, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It just sucks. Here we go. We did the border. I'll tell you, the, the border is titanium white, gloss gel medium. And my not-so-secret ingredient, it's... Um, it's by Liquitex, it's glass bead medium. So it's just this clear medium that has glass beads in it. And it just makes for a cool texture, you know? So I always put that stuff in. And then, um, so just glass bead medium, gloss gel medium, and titanium white. And then I kind of like dab it around. You know, I'm trying to create some texture on the edge. You know, I'm just like, lifting it up and moving it around and I'm not like flat stroking it so to speak I'm kind of bouncing the brush around even though this is sped up I mean you get the idea so I'm, I'm just creating some nice waves and stuff so the pictures I posted on Instagram I, I'm pretty sure I did it um, you know it looked like like cake frosting or something it looked it looked like you could have probably eaten it um, I actually I, I think uh, in a little bit here I get a zoomed in video of uh, the uh, cake frosting as we'll call it and I'm, of course using my one of my palette knives to kind of just you know scrape off the bottom to keep them nice and clean you know what I mean I don't tape off the back of my frames but I seen another guy another another artist artist artistette I don't know if she was a female artist but she taped the back of them and you know because it keeps them from getting all crazy nasty but I don't know I, I kind of like the, the dirtiness on the back of a canvas. Like, that's where you got to grab it, and that's where you got to move it. And so, yeah, there's going to be painty fingerprints on stuff. But that's, I don't know. To me, that's I think that's kind of cool. So I don't tape off the back of my thing. So, But I make sure that it's a nice flat edge, as you can see. I scrape it off so, you know, if you're going to hang out one of these masterpieces on your wall, it sits nice and flat. But here we go. We're coming up now. Sit tight. We're going to zoom in on uh, the cake frosting here in, in a mere seconds. As soon as this blue tape comes off, we're gonna, I'm going to bring my camera down and get you up close and personal with uh, the Matrix's uh, cake frosting border. But look at that. This is just like awesome. I don't know. I love it. Okay, here we go. See what I mean? That shit looks good enough to eat. And it'll dry like that too. It won't flatten out or nothing. It'll dry just like that. Like a spackle. Ooh, look at this slow motion. Look at that. Just like sliding down a slope. <gasps> Let's do it again even slower. It's like going down the cake frosting white border river. And and then jumping out of your canoe right at the end right does that make sense come on it's saturday night this is what i'm doing i'm making a voiceover anyways here we go one last time pizzao now is when we break out the tea thingy the tea ruler and it is difficult to even get a straight line sometimes so sometimes i just put the tape down and do like i eyeball it and then just bring in the ruler to see if I was how close or how far I was. But you'll see, obviously, that this side, that you know, these. Usually, when I do these paintings, I, I create the you know the the big long stripes, and then I'll create one smaller section, of conflicting, uh, lines. And this one, I, I did more than one section of conflicting lines because I can. Because this is abstract art. It makes no sense. It makes sense to me in my mind. And there's a, a, a philosophy behind it that I've explained to some degree in other videos. But that's me. Even though I created it and I, and I took the time to do all this stuff and tape and paint and peel and tape and paint and peel and all this and measure and, and all this nut and craziness you could look at it and say 
this is what I see or this is what it makes me think or whatever and that I want to look at this painting for the rest of my life hanging on my wall and it will be for sale not to throw in a uh, you know a shameless uh, sales pitch but all these paintings are for sale uh, I don't have a web store anymore per se uh, I took all that down because it was just a pain in the butt to manage we want to simplify things so if you see a painting of mine if you're actually a fan if you're a collector if you're listening to this voiceover right now you know if you see any of my paintings you and you're interested in them do not hesitate to reach out to me your best bet is to email me at embrace the matrix at gmail I, uh, my email is on my website but if you are not that i'm pushing hey listen i'm not trying to push it on you you know I mean, I was giving some away, you know, thinking that like a drug dealer, you know, you give them, you give them free first and they come back for more and they'll pay you. It didn't exactly happen that way, but nonetheless, I didn't mind because I had an overrun of paintings anyways. And of course, you know, you move on, you advance. But if you see any painting or anything that you're interested in, it doesn't matter where you are in the world, as long as you are on planet Earth. I don't have uh, universal shipping yet or galaxy shipping. I'm working on that. Um, so, but for right now, I can only ship anywhere on planet Earth. So, if you do see something you're interested in, shoot me a message and tell me which one it is, and I'll tell you what I'm asking for it, and we could come to an agreement on price, you know, or what you are. Better yet, let me know what you're looking for, or what you can afford, and I'll, uh, you know, I'll accommodate you. And I'm, uh, you know, I, I do this because it's very therapeutic. I do this because it helps relax me. As complicated as some of this stuff is, I do a few different things, you know. I like doing the, the lifelines with the string and, and, the, and the rope and stuff. Uh, that's what I really enjoy, and I, I have a, you know, a, a good solid meaning behind that uh, of why I do it and what it means to me. But... You know, even these with this like precision stuff, and some people might think that's quite stressful because it's, but it's not. Actually, it's actually very relaxing for me. I just like it to work out as as I envision it, and sometimes it does, and sometimes it doesn't. Um, so you know, you just have to kind of roll with it. Like right here, like I'm, uh, I, I mixed up this paint, and as you can see, it's very you know see through. You know, it's not very what do they say opaque. So we had to bust a fan out and some devil horns and, you know, summon the, the, the depths of Satan to come out and quick dry this <laughs> uh, to some degree so I can put another layer of paint on. I didn't want to wait. So we're just going to sit here for just a little bit longer and watch me hold the fan over it and I'm checking it. And it's, you know, I just need it to tack up a little so I can put a thicker layer on top so you don't see through you know you don't we don't want you seeing through the paint so but yeah if you see anything of mine just reach out and say hey man i'm interested in this i have a bunch of smaller paintings still sitting behind me and when i make my video uh my studio video which will be coming up soon you'll see you know how i have things set up and laid up so i still have a lot of smaller paintings i'm only focusing on larger canvases now but i still have plenty of you know 16 by 20 and 18 by 24s and stuff so very much shippable packable and shippable uh reasonably but see how by letting it dry you know putting some air on it letting it tack up a little it was easy just to come over it and now you can't see nothing all you see is uh this was orange the fur it's hard you know even with video now i'm i'm looking at it and sometimes the colors don't represent quite right because i have the painting behind me <clears throat> yeah, and the first one I used was orange. This is Galleria <clears throat> Win Winston Newton or whatever it is. This is uh, their orange cadmium. Uh, I like uh, the mid-range paint. I like all the paints. I've said this before. I use Artist Loft. I use Liquitex. I use Galleria, Windsor Newton, um, Golden. I have, I have a little bit of everything. Um, liquid paints or you know the liquid versions like I love the golden liquids liquid acrylics those are the best um, you know a lot of the heavy body stuff 
I even kind of started getting the soft body because I'm mixing a lot of paint. So you don't really have to have that heavy body necessarily. But again, it depends on what you're going for. I mean, yeah, so I work with them all and they all have their purpose. I just don't buy into that. I hate it. And I've said it before. I hate going to Michael's and you see the, 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 uh, you know, the levels, the level one artist where you're a beginner so you must use artist loft cheap paints and then you know level two intermediate and then level three professional it's just like my thing is just like sell your damn paint we don't need this uh segregation and you know making me feel like you know i'm not good enough to buy the golden paint or use the golden paint but see it's hard to see here but like i try on that orange you know rectangle on the upper right of it, I try to get a little bit of a corner so you can see that it's squared. I mean, I really put forth some effort in trying to make sure this is, uh, it doesn't look it at all. That's the beauty of it. So when you're looking at this painting straight on, it, it doesn't look, even taking photos of it, like I was taking photos and putting on Instagram, it, it looks like it's all like Kelly Wampus and stuff. That's what I love about it. It's like a, a what is it, a, a optical illusion. But, um, but yeah, it, but it is. I can tell you right now, those squares are squared with the canvas. Uh, but it may not look it, but they are. So, of course, I'm doing a littler, a littler, uh, you know, smaller little rectangle. I thought I was going to put three shapes in uh, and different colors, obviously. I started, I mean, I have a ton of paint that I bought, even though I haven't painted in a while. Uh, now that I'm getting back into it, you know, I'm going through and kind of trying to use up some of my old paints because no matter what, this stuff doesn't last forever because you can, or I've already seen some of it getting thick and chunky and stuff and just about to like, I don't know what happens to it. Maybe it just gets stiffer and harder and just, ooh, stiffer and harder. That's a good thing, right? Well, it's a good thing in some cases, but now when it comes to acrylic paint, stiffer and harder is not good. So yeah, when you're when that I want to avoid that. So I'm using up some of my old colors and stuff. I gotta be honest, as I go forward, I'm probably gonna be focusing on darker, more blacks, grays, reds, and some whites. It's gonna be a, a more just yeah. I you know I know it sounds like oh, it's dark. It's going he's going dark. Well yeah I am, and I'm taking y'all with me. So either you. You, you know, you buy your ticket or you unsubscribe and we never see each other again. And oh, you don't think I see you? I do. I'm looking at you right now. You're watching a video. You know what you're doing right now? You're watching me tape this little short rectangular and you see the back of my fat head. See, I told you, I know, I know what you're doing right now. I can see what you're doing right now. I am everywhere. I'm like Lucy. I'm everywhere. Um, so yeah. I love the feedback too. I gotta say, for those those true fans out there, and I, and I know who you are, um, they, uh, you know, I love the comments. Keep them coming. You know, I, I reply to every single comment. I love it. I really do. Um, I was just telling my wife that that I really uh, I enjoy it. I enjoy that you enjoy what I'm doing and what I'm putting out there for you guys to see, and that you're uh, you're digging it. And some of you are getting it. Maybe some of you aren't. I've gotten some negative stuff. I'm not going to lie. That's cool. You know, I always say the same thing. If, if you know, if, if you're going to tell me I suck, well, tell me why you think I suck. Just don't say you suck or that looks like crap or it looks like a kid threw paint on a canvas. We're like, okay, well, can you just explain a little more? Because I got a two-year-old and I can barely get him to put a crayon on paper. So I don't know. I don't know. I, I, it's a little more calculated than just slinging paint on a canvas. Uh, so nonetheless, and this is uh, golden. See, I'm throwing down some golden here, straight out of the, straight out of the jar. This is uh, like a turquoise. Um, I think, yeah, I can't remember the name of it. I, I think I flashed it. So go back and pause. That's the other thing I'm trying to do. I'm trying to, you know, show you what paints I'm using. So I, I flash them. I hold them up. So if you must. Just go back and just pause. You'll see it. Or send me a message and I'll answer you. But yeah, that's, you know, those are little golden jars. I think they're eight ounce jars or something. I don't know. So I'm just going straight from straight out the jar. You know, sometimes we put gloss gel medium in. I do that a lot. But other times I just 
you know, straight out the tube, or in this case, jar. So, I hope, you know, you guys are getting ready for Halloween. I know Halloween's coming up, and it's like our favorite holiday around here. But we've been so busy with our main business, and, uh, you know, obviously two-year-old, and moving, and all that stuff. We haven't been able to put everything into our Halloween, and we got all our, you know, we have a, a array of decorations. So, we're always like... That ho- we're, we're that house on the street that you know is just insane over Halloween. So yeah, uh, we, we have you know 15 foot inflatables and all kinds of stuff. And I get the fake blood out and pour that all over. And I got Chucky dolls and just Blair. We even uh, last year we were making Blair Witch little stick men and hanging those in the tree and dunking them in blood and stuff yeah pretty crazy so yeah people are always tripping out at our house they walk by and just like probably think oh there's some real freaking you know house of a thousand corpses kind of people living there but lo and behold that's exactly what we are <laughs> uh, wait not i didn't mean to say that i'll edit that out don't you didn't hear that um uh yeah edit that out uh, click so um, anyways <sighs> so yeah we're going here let's see now we're going for like more of a squarey rectangle um, and this one I was I struggled I gotta be honest with the color I didn't know what color because I'm, I'm you know I wanted this to be colorful I've done these before and it's usually just black and white or red and black and you know I wanted this one to be a little different colorful I mean, this, I, I think this painting in total, because obviously I record all of, you know, 98% of the painting I do. So when I put it all together in my uh, power director, my editor, I can see how much time I put in. I think this one was well over three hours total time. Plus I had that missing clip. So probably like closer to four hours total, total time in on this one. So that's, you know, that's fairly significant for uh, an abstract painting, um, but I think. But then again, who knows? Some people might take weeks or months to do one. I, what do I know? You know, I'm just, uh, I'm just the matrix. So, yeah, but I struggle with the color. I, this whole time I'm, I'm taping this off. I don't. Uh, and the only thing I do is I square up the, the first line with each corner so i that's how i create my baseline i guess is just i center it with each you know corner the tape and then go from there so yeah i struggled i didn't know i actually uh i forget what i pulled i think i pulled out uh gallery or windsor newton galleria crimson which is by far my favorite red period um if i had to pick only one red it would it would be gallery gallery of crimson or or in a close like like humping second is uh pyrrole py, pyrrole red golden's pyrrole red i love that red that red's awesome but i don't know when we're talking red and crimson it's kind of two different things but not really because red is crimson and crimson is red so yeah but nonetheless, I like them both. Those are my go-to reds. So I picked that up first. and But then I'm like, eh, you know, it's just it's too close to orange. You know, it's just going to look silly. And then I went, I uh, ended up, with, I believe, with the Quinta, I don't know, I call it like the quintessential magenta or whatever. Um, so it's that weird dark red, purpley, whatever. So that's what ultimately I went with. And that's a golden as well. So, you know, see, I'm working with all the, 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 um, the background primarily in the, uh, titanium white is, uh, uh, artist loft and, uh, with, uh, gloss gel medium and the rest is, uh, you know, more premium paints. Ooh, do whatever, man. I don't care if you mix up ashes, you know, if you grind up, uh, leaves outside and, and soak them in some solution and create a color. You don't even want to know what I was trying to do. All right, since you guys, now nah, I'll save it for the next video. I'll tell you something. What I, I'll tell you the the stupidest idea I ever 
came up with when it came to painting uh, in the next uh, we'll talk through. And let me tell you, it's a doozy. And you, I can guarantee you, guarantee you, you've never heard this idea before ever. Maybe, maybe, but I really don't think so. And I'll tell you this much, it includes a bodily fluid. And that's all I'm going to say. And no, it's not what you think. Um, but it does include bodily fluid. And it's the stupidest thing. I tried it. It didn't work. I, I kind of hyped things up a little on my social media. And it just didn't follow through. So I just let it fizzle. But because um, that was going to be my new thing. And it just didn't work out. And I'll tell you about it. And I promise I'll tell you about it in the next, uh, the next voiceover video yeah pretty stupid we're coming to the end here you guys you, you're a trooper if you've made it this far almost 40 minutes you're a trooper i mean i love you you're you're a true embrace the matrix fan thank you for your support please of course give this one a, a thumbs up i don't break any of the new youtube you know thing violations with the content and stuff so all my stuff is G-rated, except for maybe some of these voiceovers. Um, yeah, don't let the kids listen to the voiceovers. But the other ones with the music, which is most of them, yeah, we're family friendly around. Family friendly around here. See, look at that. Doesn't it kind of look like it's shifted a little to the right? Yeah, it's weird, but believe me, it's on. So we got some stills, of course. You know how I do things over here. I, I show you guys some close-ups. Let's just see. You know. You guys tell me what you want. You do you want do you like this stuff? I just thought about making a shortened version of this one so you can either watch the you know the shorter 5 to 10 minute edit or you know you have the voiceover option because of course some people like to hear my voice from what I understand and I appreciate that and you know like hearing what I have to say. See look at that. Don't you just want to eat it? Man, it just looks like vanilla frosting with like candy in it. Yum. So, yeah. Hey, guys, thanks for sticking with me. I'm back better than ever. Coming up, I got some new ideas and some things. Are, I'm sticking with what I know. Thanks for all your support. Keep, keep watching the videos. Thumbs up. Sharing them if you choose. Here's what it looks like. Bam. Kind of weird. Kind of like a mouth, maybe. I don't know. It's different. Guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And I'll look for you in the next one.